I killed an elk on Friday and I've been butchering it. I've already got the four quarters and the lower half of the back strap removed from the animal. I also have the tenderloins out of here. The only thing that's left is the biggest portion of the back straps. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna cut them off, but we're gonna leave them attached to the ribs so we can have some really cool tomahawk steaks. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. First thing you wanna do is you wanna slice down either side of the backbone and remove the meat only from the vertical portion. We'll leave it attached down here on the ribs. Once that's sliced, you wanna estimate about how long you want the tomahawk handles to be. The back strap's only about this wide. So I've got another six inches out here and I made a score with my knife to indicate where I'm going to cut. I'll do the same on this side when we get there. The next step, and you can do this with a hatchet or it's a lot easier if you use a sawzall. Take your reciprocating saw, put a new blade in there, nice clean one, it wouldn't hurt to wash it. And then we're gonna start cutting upward right at the point where the ribs attach to the spine. Straight up, trying to angle your blade inward so that it meets up with the cut you made on the outside. So check this out. So work the blade in there. Remember, you have a slot on the back side and you want the blade to get in that slot. So angle the blade in toward the center of the spine. Now we're gonna continue that cut all the way up to the top. Once you've cut all the way to the top with your saw, all you need to do is slice in between each rib right down to the end. So we're gonna do this from, we're gonna do it from the outside. Nope, no we're not. We're gonna do it from the inside because you can see the ribs much more easily. Simply take your knife. You can leave the meat on the rib if you want. Slice down through everything. And now you have a tomahawk steak. I'll clean this up just a little bit, take the bits and pieces, and I'm gonna cut them to length this way. Now, if you get longer blades, like eight inch blades, these are only sixes, but if you get eight or 10 inch blades, it might be easier to cut down through from the top side, but these just don't quite have enough reach to get where I want to cut. I think we're gonna go ahead and cut this bottom part off. There's nothing left on there that we need. See how that works? That's the entire ridge of the spine right there. So let's keep cutting. Okay, if you'll pull it sort of outward as I pull this side. Once you've sliced all the way up, then we're gonna cut down this cut line. Now, you don't have to do that now if you're gonna do individual steaks, but if you wanna do a crown rib roast or something like that, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and leave all these together and just cut down the line. Got a few short guy problems now. So I've got my ladder.
that's it. That's what they call a complete rib, rib roast. Right there. So I'm going to show you a neat trick here. This is something you would normally do with lamb or pork. But one really cool thing you can do is you can slice down each rib. This is my grind pile. Clean this up a little bit. You can leave those on if you want, it doesn't matter. I'm going to take them off this time. You can see where the back strap ends right here. So that's where I'm that's what I'm aiming for when I cut those pieces off. Ready. Oops, I cut the back strap a little bit right there. Okay, almost ready. You could put this in the oven just like that if you wanted, or you can wrap this thing. Let's take this off too. This is all going in the grind pile. There's a big tendon in there we're gonna get out. See that big tendon right there? You don't want that. So that'll come off. that to the tendon that's hard as a rock you don't want any of that in there so take that all out throw the tendon away now you can take this crown rib roast or I'm sorry you can take this roast and you can wrap it and you can tie those last two together with butcher's twine and you bake it in the oven like that isn't that cool? So we'll season it up, we'll tie it, bake that in the oven, and serve it just like that. And then you cut the steaks when you serve. So there you have it. That's how you deal with uh, an entire elk carcass if you want to make tomahawk steaks. You don't have to bake it this way. You can slice these down, put them on the grill two inches thick, and you'll have some great steaks. Make sure when you shoot your animal you take good care of it. If you can get it home, in one piece, it's going to make things a lot easier. You can do this in the field, but you'll have to use a hatchet. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Okay, I've made the crown rib roast. It's in the oven, and I want you to see how it looks. Check this out. <laughs>